What a weird year 2018 was for WWE. Between Daniel Bryan coming out of retirement and the relaunch of the XFL to WWE signing a huge television contract with Fox and Roman Reigns taking a leave of absence in order to receive treatment for leukemia, it seemed like we were never too far away from the next major news story. Throw in WWE entry into a deal to produce major shows in Saudi Arabia and Brock Lesnar flirting with leaving the company in order to go back to the UFC, and there were plenty of distractions for the company to contend with while trying to get on with their day-to-day -day job of producing weekly wrestling content. On pay-per-view, 2018 was a mixed bag, as any year typically is, but the good shows were really good and there weren't too many disasters to moan about. We also had the arrival of the baddest woman on the planet, Ronda Rousey, who would play a pivotal role on every major show she was a part of. And we saw the ascendance of Seth Rollins, AJ Styles, Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair, four premier talents that brought her every time they stepped in the ring. So how do their pay-per-view offerings stack up? Which shows were saved by one match and which shows were almost sunk by another? I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic.com and this is every WWE pay-per-view of 2018 ranked from worst to best. Join us! Number 15, Crown Jewel. Though it was always a controversial decision for WWE to enter into a business agreement with the Saudi government, shocking real-world events led to a particularly dark cloud hanging over Crown Jewel. Bearing that in mind, it's quite hard to view the show as a simple piece of escapism. It also doesn't help that the show simply isn't very good, with the last three matches guaranteeing that it stands out as the poorest pay-per-view of 2018. The headliner should have been a grand occasion, the Brothers of Destruction facing off with DX in something of a dream match, but this was 2018, not 2008, or for that matter, 1998. Shawn Michaels' first match since retiring eight years prior at WrestleMania 26 was fine as a bit of nostalgia, but dragged on way too long considering the accumulative age and wear and tear on all four guys. The other featured attraction, Brock Lesnar against Braun Strowman for the vacant Universal title, could and really should have finally been the monster among men's big moments. Sadly, WWE played it safe and had the Beast Incarnate handily dispatch him within a few minutes. Elsewhere, AJ Styles and Samoa Joe was good and could have been better if they had more time to play with, The Bar vs The New Day was also fine. And the rest of the show was dedicated to the tournament to crown the best wrestler in the entire world, naturally won by Shane McMahon, who was substituting for an injured Miz in the finals. I'll not bother going through each individual match because life is too short, but they were all brief and inoffensive and designed to be basic and appeal to a live audience that may not be too familiar with the product. But just remember that out of Jeff Hardy, Randy Orton, Rey Mysterio, Kurt Angle, Dolph Ziggler, Bobby Lashley, Seth Rollins and The Miz, that Shane McMahon was selected to win the thing. Who says WWE don't have a sense of humor? <laughs> Number 14, The Greatest Royal Rumble. The laughs continue at number 14 with WWE's first trip to the kingdom, the greatest Royal Rumble. No, that distinction does not belong to Flair in 92, Edge in 2010, or even Steve Austin in 2001. It belongs to this 50-man cluster kerfuffle featuring all of your favorites like Hiroki Sumi, Baba Tunde, and Dan Mather. The Rumble wasn't actually half bad, just needlessly long and with some serious dead spots in between the arrival of an actual genuine star. Aside from the Rumble, WWE really stacked the card with all of the big stars making an appearance, John Cena against Triple H was a solid and safe choice for an opener, and they had a decent match. An intercontinental title four-way ladder match with The Miz, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, and Samoa Joe was also good viewing. Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns in a cage was Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, but in a cage. AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura continued their trend of having good but unexceptional matches, and Rusev and The Undertaker's casket match was a bit of throwback fun that didn't harm anyone, except obviously for Rusev and Aiden English, who both got chinned by the Phenom. There were other matches for the Cruiserweight, US, and both tag team titles, but if I carry on recapping them all, then this entry will probably last as long as this whole show did. So let's move on. Number 13, Backlash. 
It's fair to say that nobody had any great expectations going into Backlash 2018. Still, when your match of the night features The Miz and your main event has fans chanting CM Punk and boring, and then leaving in droves before its conclusion, you know you've underachieved. The Miz and Seth Rollins kick things off in real style, having a belter of a 20-minute match over the Intercontinental title that just kept building and building to a grand finale. The show sadly peaked there, and nothing could really bring it back, despite a hot crowd and some matches that look good on paper. One such match was the next installment in the AJ Styles Nakamura series. Again, these two had a tight enough match that ultimately fell below what they're capable of and ended in another unsatisfying manner with a double kick to the ding ding. Everything else from Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy's US title clash to Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax's Raw Women's title showdown was just average. Carmella vs Charlotte Flair, Daniel Bryan vs Big Cass, remember him, and Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens vs Bobby Lashley and the Red Hot Braun Strowman were less than. The less said about the plodding Roman Reigns Samoa Joe show closer, the better. Number 12. Extreme Rules it's nice to mix things up sometimes and let a secondary title shine. It's also essential when your world champion is on hiatus and charges several hundred thousand dollars per match. Nevertheless, kudos to WWE for putting the Intercontinental title center stage, making the Iron Man match between Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins the first time the belt had been defended in the main event of a pay-per-view since Backlash 2001. The match was as athletic and dramatic as you would expect, and a refreshing change of pace to the usual WWE main event style. Further down the card, Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns had a stirring scrap, Finn Balor eked out a victory over Baron, no, wait, excuse me, Constable Corbin, and Kevin Owens beat Braun Strowman in a cage match. Well, I say beat, he won by default after doing his best Mick Foley impression and taking a ride off the top of the cage and through the announce table. Shinsuke Nakamura downed Jeff Hardy in six seconds, because why not? Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax had an extreme rules match that featured all sorts of shenanigans and run-ins from Mickie James, Natalia, and Ronda Rousey. Carmella beat Asuka with James Ellsworth suspended above the ring in a shark cage, again, because why the hell not? The B-team of Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas toppled Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy for the Raw Tag Team titles, yep, that happened, and Team Hell No's big reunion ended in a loss because Kane was jumped backstage. He still bravely came out to take part in the match, but apparently couldn't secure victory on a sore leg. Just a reminder, this is a man who has survived being set on fire multiple times. Number 11. Super Showdown G'day, mates! We're in Australia now for Super Showdown, another international pay-per-view that, if nothing else, at least looked and felt a little different in its presentation. And in the network era, I'll take that. Since it was a major stadium show in a market that doesn't get to see WWE live very often, the company felt the need to offer an epic main event and booked Undertaker vs Triple H for the last time ever in a singles match. Epic is of course code word for slow and long, which is what this 30 minute entry into their storied rivalry was. An unnecessary sequel to their incredible Hell in a Cell match six years prior, it wasn't actively terrible or anything, but could have accomplished what it did in about half the time. Other main Major happenings on a 10 match card included AJ Styles beating the Samoan Submission Machine by submission, how ironic, in their WWE title match, hometown hero Buddy Murphy beating Cedric Alexander in a really good and hard hitting match to capture the Cruiserweight title, and the Shield besting Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, and Drew McIntyre in another good long match. Everyone else brought the required effort, no small feat after a 20 plus hour flight. I can't even be asked to go to the chippy after a two hour nap. Number 10. Elimination Chamber Come 2018, the WWE Elimination Chamber pay-per-view concept had been running for eight years. The shows had produced mainly solid matches in that time, but it had gotten a little samey. Realizing that, WWE shook things up a little bit for that year's edition. For a start, the show had the first ever women's chamber match with Bayley, Mandy Rose, Mickie James, Sonya Deville, Alexa Bliss, and Sasha Banks going at it for the Raw Women's title. Expertly laid out and containing the right mix of smooth action, big moves, and storytelling, this was a fantastic showcase for the division. They really knocked it out of the park on the first go. Another innovation was making the men's chamber match a seven-man affair, because more is more, and too much is never enough in the overkill world of WWE. Though not as good as the women's chamber match, this still had its bright spots, and Braun Strowman looked like a star by eliminating five guys before the LOL Roman wins finish. 
Elsewhere, not much of note happened besides Asuka and Nia Jax having a good hard-fought match and Ronda Rousey suplexing Triple H through a table during her WrestleMania contract signing, a nice change of pace from the smiling point-at-sign Ronda we'd seen previously. Number 9. Fastlane Vroom vroom, baby! It's time to start your engines, fasten your seatbelts, make sure all mirrors are in the correct position, signal before pulling off, and adhere to the legal speed limits because we're on the fast lane to WrestleMania. Fastlane 2018 kicked off with a match that was good, even if it never got quite out of second gear, Shinsuke Nakamura defeating Rusev on Rusev Day of all days. That was followed by Randy Orton taking on Bobby Roode in a US title match. That was certainly a good wrestling match between two in-shape men with short haircuts and trunks. Both Naomi and Becky Lynch vs Carmella and Natalya and The Usos vs The New Day were unremarkable. Charlotte Flair and Ruby Riot's SmackDown women's title match was a good showing and helped set up Asuka's challenge of the Nature Girl at WrestleMania. After a long stretch of alright action, things really picked up with the main event, a superb six-pack challenge match for the WWE title. AJ Styles defended against John Cena, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Dolph Ziggler and Big Banter Corbin in a chaotic and fast-paced encounter that just about saved the show from being a total washout. Number 8. WrestleMania 34 If WrestleMania 34 was as good as it was long, it would have been the best wrestling show of all time. As it was, it was an uneven card with a few great matches and the occasional head-scratcher. First, the good. The main card kicked off in style with an energetic triple threat match between The Miz, Seth Rollins and Finn Balor over the IC title. Charlotte and Asuka then had another great match, though at the time many balked at ending Asuka's winning streak on the grandest stage of them all. Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle's hotly anticipated match against Triple H and Stephanie McMahon began with one of the funniest WrestleMania entrances of all time and then built superbly into the best match on the show. Rousey proved to be a natural with great instincts and timing and scored a very very popular win, tapping out the billion dollar princess after kicking the game's ass just for laughs. Undertaker and John Cena's match shocked everyone, not because it actually took place though, literally everyone saw that coming. The surprise came in its match length, clocking in at just under 3 minutes. Even more surprising was the fact that people didn't mind. The sight of Undertaker easily putting an entitled John Cena in his place was exactly the sort of shock that pays off at Mania and also helped protect an aging dead man in the ring. But now, the not so good. Nobody could say that Shinsuke Nakamura and AJ Styles had a bad match, but it was certainly an under overwhelming one. Part of the problem was that they'd absolutely tore the house down in New Japan a couple of years prior, and this rematch couldn't live up to the hype. It was also disappointing to see Nakamura fall short in his quest for the WWE title, a result that he still hasn't really recovered from. I'm curious which one of the 30 writers WWE employees came up with Nicholas as the payoff to the Braun Strowman mystery partner angle, though I guess it put smiles on faces, namely John Cones, aka Nicholas's dad. And the main event between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns could have been a good match, they've had a great one at WrestleMania before, but the complete rejection of it by the fans meant that this one didn't have a chance. The rest of the show is your usual forgettable filler, don't bother with it, but go out of your way for Asuka vs Charlotte, the IC title match and Rowdy Ronda's in-ring debut. Number 7. TLC Sandwiched between Survivor Series and the Royal Rumble, two of the so-called Big Four, TLC never really feels like a must-see show, unless you like to watch people hurt themselves on household furniture. If that's your cup of tea, then TLC 2018 will offer you plenty to enjoy. This is especially true of the Tables, Ladders and Chairs main event between Asuka, Becky Lynch and Charlotte, three of WWE's top talents of the year. This cavalcade of gutsy spots and hard-hitting action was the perfect way to close out the show as the three women took full advantage of the stipulations and somehow avoided disaster while putting it all on the line. Also putting it all on the line but without the plunder to aid them was AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan, two of the best of this generation who were thankfully given almost half an hour to construct their work of art, more than enough time to tell an engrossing story that sucked the fans in. Grippling grappling goodies here. And Ronda Rousey continued her fabulous year by putting on an engrossing match with Nia Jax, which was a good example of the David vs Goliath formula, except David wasn't a former UFC champion, too bad for Nia. 
Elsewhere, Rey Mysterio and Randy Orton had an inventive chairs match, Finn Balor and Drew McIntyre went at it, tag team champions The Bar took on The New Day and The Usos, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins had a pants match, no, that's not a stipulation, I just mean that the match wasn't very good, which was massively affected by the god-awful storyline going into it. Still, one terrible match isn't bad going, and TLC 2018 is worth a punt if you're stuck for something to watch on a cold, wet Tuesday night. Number 6. SummerSlam Number 6 and we're on to SummerSlam, the second biggest party of the summer after my big summer blowout with Jim, Oz, Finch, Kevin and the rest of the lads. SummerSlam 2018 was a promising show that thankfully delivered on that promise and got off to a blistering start with Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler's roller coaster of an icy title match. Other scorching action came courtesy of Becky Lynch, Charlotte and, yes, Carmella in a spirited triple threat match for the SmackDown Women's title. Though it had a touch of the Claire Lynch's about it because of the storyline involving AJ's family, Samoa Joe and the face that runs the place had a typically excellent WWE title match that was full of fire and could justifiably be ranked alongside any number of their TNA bangers from years ago. Daniel Bryan's lengthy saga with The Miz continued in a decent match, which was among the best of his in-ring comeback to that point. However, the finish put a slight dampener on things, Maurice handing her husband a pair of brass knuckles and helping him secure that big heelish win. Despicable. Jeff Hardy and Shinsuke Nakamura clashed in a battle of two freakishly charismatic enigmas. Luckily for us, the match lasted more than 10 seconds this time and gave us a better idea of what these two unique athletes are capable of when paired together. That swanton onto the ring apron, the hardest part of the ring, mind you, still makes my hip hurt just by looking at it. Ronda Rousey again gave off the air of somebody who had been doing professional wrestling for many years in her successful women's title defense over Alexa Bliss. And in the main event, Roman Reigns finally overcame Brock Lesnar in a match that was short and to the point and came across much better than their earlier WrestleMania flop. Overall, SummerSlam 2018 is a great show in front of a hot crowd. The matches feel mostly big time and most of the booking makes sense. Number 5. Survivor Series it's often been said, in a pre-Fox world at least, that SmackDown is considered the B-show within WWE. Raw, the flagship show, is the important one. Survivor Series 2018 would appear to reinforce this belief, as, not including the pre-show, the red brand scored a clean sweep of six victories to zero losses over their blue contemporaries. Was it a rib based on the perception of the two shows, or did WWE just finally go ahead and do what they must have been waiting years for? As always, the interbrand concept made for some fun and rare seen match combinations, even if the whole battle for brand supremacy theme undoubtedly means more to WWE and their writers than to any normal fan. The two traditional Survivor Series elimination tag matches were both enjoyable and given plenty of time to develop and tell their stories, but the key reason to check out the show are the matches between the SmackDown and Raw women's and men's singles champions. The best of the bunch is Daniel Bryan's Herculean effort against Brock Lesnar, who always seems to give a little bit more at the Survivor Series for some reason. And to think fans didn't know they were going to get this match until days beforehand when Brian beat AJ Styles for the WWE title. The WWE Universe must have thought they were getting a preview of the WrestleMania 35 main event when Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair went head to head. Another stirring match, this one really picked up as it went along before the cheap DQ ending. And in other highlights, Seth Rollins continued his exceptional year in the ring by beating Nakamura, while Ali and Buddy Murphy's Cruiserweight title match was a gem. And in one particularly low light, superstar rapper and former WWE wrestler Enzo Amore decided to show up in the crowd and hijack the event during the bar versus the Authors of Pain. He had his jaw promptly hijacked by security, who threw him out and banned him from ever entering the Staples Center again. And you can't teach that. Number 4. Money in the Bank Number 4 is Money in the Bank, something I'm sorely lacking since my decision to place all of those bets on Mojo Rawley being a WWE Champion heading into WrestleMania 36. We live and we learn. An investment you can be sure about is the few hours it takes to watch WWE Money in the Bank 2018, one of the best pay-per-views of that year. As always, the multi-person ladder matches continue to raise the bar when it comes to creativity and the bumps WWE superstars are willing to take in order to entertain. I mean, I love all of you, but I'm not quite ready to have somebody suplex me through something made out of steel in order to prove it. Nakamura and Styles had yet another match which was possibly the best in their series. Fought under last man standing rules, this had great pay Pacing, big moves, stiff strikes, and an amazing finish in the shape of AJ's phenomenal forearm through the announce table. 
Once again, Seth Rollins continued his outstanding run of form by dragging a very good match out of Elias. Ronda Rousey and Nia Jax contested a grand match that was unlike anything else on the show. A great twist at the end too, with Money in the Bank briefcase holder Alexa Bliss cashing in on Nia after causing the DQ. And Daniel Bryan further demonstrated his incredible abilities in the opener with Big Cass. It might not be saying much, but this was Big Cass's best singles match ever, and a big reason for that was the efforts of Dee Bry. A couple of slow spots in Sami Zayn vs Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns vs Jinder Mahal aren't enough to drag this down, and it stands as the fourth best WWE pay-per-view of 2018. Number 3. Evolution And now for something completely different, as we look at Evolution, the first ever female-only WWE pay-per-view. A long time coming, Evolution was a welcome celebration of WWE's women, both past and present, and got underway with the return of two Hall of Famers, Lita and Trish Stratus, going up against Alicia Fox and Mickie James in a hot opener. A fun 20-woman battle royal for a future title shot followed, it was nice to see the likes of Medusa, Ivory and Molly Holly come back and mix it up with today's stars, even if Ember Moon should have definitely, DEFINITELY eliminated Nia Jax at the end. The Mae Young Classic Finals match between Io Shirai and Tony Storm, while not bad, wasn't the classic that they're capable of, there's still time for that to happen of course though. Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Natalia's win over the Riot Squad, while perhaps not the best use of the babyface team, was a good demonstration of their talents and got them on a show that they absolutely should have been a part of, considering their contributions to the women's evolution movement within WWE. The next two matches were a marked improvement from a match quality standpoint, Shayna Baszler and Kyrie Sane having a very tidy NXT women's title match before Charlotte and Becky once again beat the eyeliner off of one another in an impactful last woman standing match. And in the main event, Ronda Rousey beat Nikki Bella in a very good match that had people genuinely thinking that Nikki could win the Raw women's title. Really, match quality isn't the main concern when it comes to a show like this, but everything was good and the top three matches truly delivered. The look and feel of the show was different and fans seemed to react very positively to the presentation. Here's hoping there are more of these to come. Number 2. Hell in a Cell what a little corker this turned out to be, with several exceptional matches and no real stinker. Sure, there was one particularly terrible match finish and the cell itself seemed unnecessary for some of the issues going into the event, but what's a boy like me to do about it, eh? Hell in a Cell kicked off with a gruesome and imaginative cell match between Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton. These two beat the living hell out of each other with ladders, chairs, tables, and in one sickening spot that I've never seen before, a screwdriver. And no, I'm not talking about the Scott Steiner variety. After Hardy and Orton's DIY circus had left town, a good clean catches catch can wrestling match was a required palate cleanser. Step up Becky Lynch and Charlotte. A great back and forth match with a lot of heat, the then heel Becky's capturing of the SmackDown women's title was a very popular moment in San Antonio. Gee, do you think this Lynch lass could go over big as a babyface? The hot streak continued in match number three, a delicious slice of tag team wrestling pie, featuring Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose taking on Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. Something of a minor classic, this is essential viewing for fans of old school doubles action. AJ Styles and Samoa Joe made it four belters in a row with a vicious battle over the WWE title. This played nicely off their previous matches and didn't have the distractions that their SummerSlam match had. Also, the finish, with AJ tapping out while pinning Joe for the three, in ensured more goodness was to come in the weeks following. After Joe and AJ, things cooled off slightly, but none of the matches were ever boring or not worth sitting through. Brie Bella and Daniel Bryan against The Miz and Maurice was a nice bit of sports entertainment, and Ronda Rousey's defense of the Raw Women's title over Alexa Bliss was longer and more compelling than their SummerSlam one, even if the result was never in any doubt. And finally, we get to the main event, a Hell in a Cell title match between Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Mick Foley served as special referee because he just can't stay out of that thing for love nor money. Another spine-jarring match, this had plenty of violence, run-ins, and a big bump off the side of the cell from Rollins and Ziggler. It would have been a much better match to end the show were it not for the Lesnar appearance and non-finish. Nonetheless, this is an excellent show from start to finish, and one you should check out if you missed it the first time. Number 1. Royal Rumble 
Many months before Evolution, WWE's women made history by main eventing the Royal Rumble pay-per-view with the first all-female Royal Rumble match. With no Deadwood, plenty of surprise returns, and a very popular winner, it delivered on all fronts and was a great way to close out what had been a strong show to that point. Speaking of pointing, Rowdy Ronda showed up at the end of the night to let everyone know that she was now a WWE superstar and was on her way to the granddaddy of them all. The men's Rumble match was also a fine piece of work and had enough possible winners in it to keep fans guessing right up until the end. The final four segment between Roman Reigns, John Cena, Finn Balor, and eventual winner Shinsuke Nakamura was one of the best WWE have done in years and had fans on the edge of their seats. And Brock Lesnar's defense over Kane and Braun Strowman may not have been pretty but then again, it was three 300-pound blokes smacking each other across the head, literally so when Lesnar decided to give Strowman a receipt for some previous indiscretion. Two very good rumbles and some really great undercard action make this the best WWE pay-per-view of 2018.